So what, you're just gonna put your iPod on shuffle? Thank you, baby. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Every single song you own is a banger. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I would like to welcome you guys to another NBA 2K24 video. But today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about my first impressions with NBA 2K24. Now, as you guys might know, NBA 2K24 dropped on September 8th, 2023. This is their 25th iteration of the game, simply because NBA 2K was the first game that ever came out. Now that we're on NBA 2K24, it feels like we have transcended every other video game in its past but there's a lot that we need to talk about because the past actually is coming to the forefront so let's go ahead and talk about nba 2k24 what it has to offer its pros its cons and what i truly think about the video game let's hop into the video this is the first year that nba 2k has focused on next gen hugely with nba 2k24's inception simply because the biggest things announced were pro play technology and cross play that are only featured on the next gen copies of the video game. Now for last gen PS4 and Xbox one, they actually got a new little park. Um, it's more so like a boat, you know, parked up against a mountain and you know, things like that. But for the city, it is a brand new revamp. It is no longer featured by something which was called the block that a lot of people were used to in last iterations of the game, but more so of a beachfront style where all of the matchmaking done is all on a beachfront. And then you can get deeper into the city where you can go to either the elite or the rise. Now, as far as it goes for matchmaking, since I'm talking about that first matchmaking in NBA 2K24 is not a problem. I haven't seen any matchmaking issues at all. I've played against people that are on Xbox, which have the little crossplay symbol. I'm guessing on Xbox, we have the cr same crossplay symbol as well since I'm on PS5. And I've also played Xbox players in the park and I've had Xbox teammates in the park and the wreck as well. So I don't see any matchmaking issues there. Crossplay is actually a huge W. Um, if you are experiencing any crossplay issues, I would definitely say leave them in the comment section because this video was probably going to be seen by some people that work for 2K. And if there's a problem, we need it to, to be addressed ASAP. Let's talk about 2K's second biggest feature, which is the pro play technology. Of course, this was the second big announcement from 2K. And this was basically every gamer's dream. This is the upgraded version of mo capping. In recent years, everybody knows that in order to, you know, see a my career cutscene, to see different people inside the video game doing, you know, all different cutscenes and stuff like that. They had to mocap these individuals. They had to fly them out. Uh, they had to bring a camera rig to certain destinations. They had to do so many different things in order to get the players movements, their dunks, their shooting forms, everything like that. But one huge thing was it wasn't in real game time. It wasn't under pressure. It wasn't for championships. What 2K has done now is they've put in pro play technology, which captures everybody on court, everything that they do. And it's supposed to package everybody into their own individual. Now, what I will say is there's a problem behind that. In recent years, when people picked combinations for their dribbles, they knew that they weren't getting the real time, you know, Curry slide or, you know, a, a real Steve Francis move. But now they're getting real life footage, which means that there's going to have to be a huge adjustment, not to the only the dribblers, but to the people defending the dribblers. But the biggest problem is that all of these animations just don't mesh well because they are real to that person. For instance, if somebody decided that they wanted to do a curry slot and then hop into a Trey Young, the animations look completely different. I've even seen 2K Labs do different things with certain animations because they know that there's a small minuscule change to the way everything blends and molds. Just think about it like this. You're trying to stir the pot with a bunch of different dope ingredients, right? And the reason why the pot isn't stirring the right way is because the way that all of these new animations are captured, it's a completely different feel. And at times it feels very, very clunky. I'm just going to go ahead and say that now. As a defender, I'm a lockdown build. I have to guard all of it. 
But what I do notice a lot is that a lot of players expect a certain outcome from when they flick the stick a certain way and get many different results. Sometimes even three to four results. I even heard while playing individuals, whether they were on Xbox or PlayStation, we would be in game chat, just chatting, just talking about certain stuff. I'd be like, yo, I like that move that you did. Do it again. And they'll try that move, get a different outcome, or I may pressure them and it may cancel out one of their animations that they tried to do. And then it gives them something different. But what I noticed is there are elite players. There are players within 2K that can do anything that they want at any given time. But there are also people out there that think that they can do these things and get a different outcome all the time, but it results in clunkiness. And I'm going to be honest, until 2K polishes it and figures out what's clunky, what's not, how they're going to fix it, whether they're going to speed something up, slow something down in order for it to blend a little bit better. This is what we're going to have to deal with. We're going to be dealing with clunkiness for the next six weeks. You know what I mean? 2K hasn't even been out for a complete week yet. So I'm guessing that we have another six weeks of all of this clunky feeling when it comes to dribbling and things like that, simply because of the appropriate technology. Now, let's talk about the shooting for a moment. Um, as my first impression, I don't have a problem with shooting. I have a 79 three-pointer on my 6'6 build, and I'm able to hit 50 plus percent from the three every single game. Now, I do understand shooting slump is real. Shooting slump is not to play with. Um, a lot of people say that, yo, every time I get the shooting slump popped up, I can't shoot. I can't make my shot. The green window disappears. I don't know how to get out of it. What I've realized is what I do is, and I did this with um, my guard that I normally play with, which is New York Minute. I told New York Minute, instead of sitting in a corner on defense, why don't he come up to the top and play beside me in the 2-3? And once you know we force a miss or whatever the case may be, he goes down on a fast break and gets a layup or a dunk or something like that to, to change you know the 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 slump of his player and to even sometimes hey do a layup a dunk and a and a assist or do a layup a dunk and shoot a mid-range or a three and see if you can get yourself out that slump before you take your next shot hiding behind the screen or trying a fade because i believe in all honesty shooting slump is in a game simply because once you keep missing shots you're not going to be able to do your fades you're not going to be able to knee how you're not going to be able to do r2 fades that's just the way the game is and do I have a huge problem with it? No, but there are people out there that have a simple problem with it because they feel like they time their shot every single time. Now we do know that there are new shot timing uh, cues, which is jump, uh, uh, set point, uh, push, and release. They are the new, you know, very early, early, late, and very late. Now I use push. Um, we could talk about that in another, you know, jump shot video or whatever the case may be. But I also want to talk to you guys about something else. The My Team community. Um, we found out through the My Team news and everything like that, that the auction house was going to be leaving. Now, of course, I don't play My Team. I don't have anything to, you know, stand on that. But what I'm hearing from My Team content creators and My Team players is that now that the auction house is gone and the taxes are very high, a lot of people are straying away from playing my team, which means a lot of the my team creators are coming over to my career to just hit level 40 and go back into my team and, you know, use some of those rewards that they get real quick simply because the auction house is not there and the taxes are so high. But that's all that I know about my team. If you are a my team player and you have other issues that you're going through, please leave them in the comment section. Since I talked about my career, right, we're going to hop into that when making your build. There's no issues there. It should be easy for you to make your build if you don't know what you want to go with, whether you want to be a specialist in something or a jack of all trades type of build. It's completely up to you. But when you get into my career, there hasn't been a staple in NBA 2K Next Gen since its inception, and that is called My Court. If we bring back My Court, I believe that a lot of players will have time to learn their jump shots and learn their dribble moves without having to go into the art of shooting building with lethal shooter or go into the Chris Brickley gym. And after you do your runs, you only get a chance to do that there because guess what? Once you do Chris Brickley and you leave, the gym is closed until the next feature. So that's a huge problem for me because not having my court at all, not being able to 
lab the way that your build works whether it's offensively or defensively is a huge huge problem and this is why i say this the gatorade facility let me be 100 complete like honest clear cut the gatorade facility has not been a staple within this game since it came out once the gatorade facility was made we go in there we do our workouts once you get gym wrapped, we'll never go back but now that the Gatorade facility has courts and they've had them for a few years now, a couple of people think that they can go in there and lab their builds, which you can. The Gatorade facility has one of the biggest hangs, the biggest lags, the worst lighting in all of NBA 2K's histories. The Gatorade facility was not made for a place to go lab your build. That was really a place to just go maybe play against friends, shoot the shit, stuff like that. But it just doesn't work. I've seen plenty of videos on Twitter of people going in the Gatorade facility and talking about latency and, and issues like that. When the Gatorade facility has had that for years, I even talked about it. Uh, I was literally inside of a uh, 1v1v1 with Davis in one of his videos. And he was talking about your pod. We can't, we can't really play in here. And I'm like, I know. And that's why I won the tournament because all I got to do is go dunk. Because the latency was so bad that people couldn't shoot. People would input a dribble. And by the time they think that it's time to input the next dribble, their player is standing still because they they inputted it too late. Or they inputted it too early because the movements were too slow. So for everybody going inside the Gatorade facility trying to lab your build, stop. It does not work. It is very, very bad. And I'm praying to goodness that 2K fixes it. Um, Hopefully by the end of this season or the upcoming seasons. I don't want to go... All of NBA 2K24 with the Gatorade facility not working at all to its potential, if that makes sense. Let's talk about something else that is a big topic in the 2K community right now besides shooting. Let's talk about badge progression and regression. Now, of course, when NBA 2K had the sliding scale of getting to 95 overall to 99 overall that, you know, back and forth trying to get your level up. I hated it. I never liked it. I never liked anything that fluctuated because we continuously work on something to be better at all year long. I never enjoyed it. Now that badge progression and regression is out, I don't like it. I never liked it. I never said I liked it, but I understand it. The thing about badge regression and progression is when you do have badges progressing, you're on top of the world. You're feeling like a thousand bucks, million bucks at that. But when badges start to regress or badges don't proc at all and they don't regress or progress because they're stuck on the lowest level of bronze, that's the problem. There are a lot of people out there that are putting in reports saying that certain badges aren't procking whatsoever. For instance, on my part, glove, it procs. Interceptor, on the other hand, never procs at all. No matter how many steals I get, from lane steals it does not proc whatsoever even if i put the badge in overdrive even if i put the badge in drill savant which we'll talk about drills in a practice facility if i put it inside of immunity or scholar the badge does not proc where other badges that i love and use 94 feet fast feet immovable enforcer bulldozer badges like that they proc all day i got those badges to their top tiers no problem whatsoever but there is a huge problem with other badges not proccing. Now let's talk about Drill Savant for a moment. When playing in my career, there's a lot of people having pixelated issues there. We'll talk about that in a moment. But when you go to the practice facility and you try to work on certain badges, guess what happens? Those practice facility drills will progress badges that you don't use. And it will not progress badges that you're trying to progress. There are two sides to every coin. Right now with the progression, a lot of people say, hey, my badge is not progressing. Hey, this badge is, isn't working or it's supposed to work on the regression side. Everybody is saying they're regressing too fast. Now, let's be honest. Immunity. That is a brand new badge perk that is out now. You can use it for C tier, B tier, A tier and S tier. One badge only. But the thing about immunity is. You have several C tier badges regressing. You have. A few B tier badges regressing. Your A tier and S tier badges don't regress that much simply because they're the ones that you use. They're the most important, you know, to the, the, the meld of your build. So they don't really regress that much. 
but those C tier and B tier badges are really, really key because you might not think that you need corner specialists at B tier, but you really do. And the fact that it regresses so fast, and even if you throw it in immunity and you still don't use it, it's still gonna regress, is a huge problem. So I think that 2K definitely should work on the badge regression and progression. And you know, whether it's giving us more points toward a uh, progression or lowering the points to regression, whatever the case may be, just 2K. We give it in, we giving it to you like this. Please fix it. Since we're on the subject of my players, right? Let's talk about the appearance tab. The appearance tab is where you go to change your outfit, you change your drip and, and stuff like that. I've always been a proponent of throwing on one outfit and having a, you know, a comp outfit or a park outfit, you know, in slot two when I go pull up on the dots. Now, not only does the appearance tab not work, right? But when you change your outfits from outfit one to outfit two, if you don't throw on a different item within your outfit too, when you back out of that menu, you still have on your first outfit. That is a very, very big problem. I know that it is cosmetic, but it's also UI and menus. So if you can't fix that little issue, it's gonna be a problem for a lot of people because all it's gonna do is raise concern to the community about what's broken in the game. So 2K, I'm not sure if you know about it. Could you pl please fix that appearance tab? And since we're also still talking about appearance, let's talk about the player banner. There is a small little hitch right now. I won't call it a glitch. Well, yeah, it's kind of a glitch. It's simply that whatever rank you are or rep level you are in your said park, whether it's elite or it's rise, I am a, I believe, rookie three. And my banner has the rookie two logo next to my banner. Right where my name is, my, my, my ID, the banner background, all of that there, the icon for the rep level is actually a level below. So that's currently a visual glitch. It's not something that where you're not getting the rewards for hitting your rep level or your ranking. You're still getting all of the rewards and stuff like that, but it's just a visual glitch on the banner. Now, since we're on the subject of rep, right? Let's talk about Elite and Rise for a moment. Now, these are the two new affiliations, the only two affiliations that you can play with or against on NBA 2K24. Now, of course, I am elite. I went with LD2K. Shakedown, I appreciate you over there at Roz, but I never play with you. I'm sorry. But one thing that I can say is that the grind to becoming a elite or a rise is really, really dope. I enjoyed it. Um, the funny thing is, this is what a lot of people do. A lot of people come in, they make their bills, and they run right to what they love. A lot of people ran right the wreck. A lot of people tried out starting five. A few people went straight to my career and there were people like me that talked to LD and went straight to the park. When I went straight to the park, I realized that I was inside of a quest that needed me to win 10 games and score hundred points. So by the time I was done with my session, I had about nine wins and about 67 to 69 points. I was like, oh, I'm almost there. So once I log on the next day, I made it to elite. It was no problem there, but there are a lot of people within the game that didn't understand that. And that's why I made tips and tricks videos because there are a lot of people that will boot up the game and not know what's going on, not know what you have to do because this year is different. So for all of the people out there that are not inside of an affiliation right now, you have to go talk to the respected uh, leader of the affiliation, which is LD2K or Shakedown and talk to them and, you know, do the quest and then, you could be getting your rep to, you know, get that, you know, that, what is it called? The Rebirth 2.0, which is a 99 overall build uh, that you can get up to once you make the veteran through. Three, uh, get your shirt off, get VC, get, you know, banners, headbands. It's, it's a whole bunch of, you know, items inside of it. But that is the grind to top 10. Now, real quick, before we hop into what I want to talk to y'all about more with Elite and Rise Parks, Let's talk about top 10 for a moment. There is a lot of bands going around right now from 2K for people, uh, I guess not botting, but you know, just, just cheating, exploiting, playing against their friends, running up different consoles because now it's cross play. This makes it much easier for people to play the same people. You see a bunch of people standing around on the court while other players is putting up shots, going on 50 game win streaks. I understand that. But there's also one huge issue. There is a lag out ban issue going on right now. 
2K, I'm not sure if they uh, up the severity or if this is just a problem on the back end with 2K, but when people lag out of games or quit out of games, they are getting banned notices. They're no longer getting you have been timed out or you have been warned or, you know, you can't play games for a couple of minutes. They're getting banned warnings. This is huge. Um, I'm not sure if this is something new that 2K has brought, but uh, it's neither here nor there for me because I haven't experienced it. But my boy Trey did experience it. I believe he was either in the starting five or something like that. And he got a ban notice. It was crazy. But back to Rise and Elite. The park designs. When I first saw the Rise Park, I was like, mm -mm, I'm good. When I say an elite park, I say, yo, this reminds me of my favorite video game, Apex Legends. I think I'm going to go there. But after seeing the overview of both parks, it is a huge eyesore and also a terrible way to navigate within both parks. Elite, a lot of the streaks and scores are missed. You cannot see them overhead at all. You go to Roz, a lot of the octopus arms and stuff like that are covering a lot of these streaks, a lot of the scores, and you literally have to pull up to the court in order to see how many people are waiting. One thing that I would say is definitely looking overview, I would say take away all the crazy cosmetics and just show the part for what it is. What And maybe, maybe it's an overlay thing, whereas though like the level of the octopus arms is layered over top of the court, so instead, why don't you put the overlay of the court on top of the octopus arm so that you can see how many people are waiting, how many people are playing, what's the score, what's the streak. And this is the reason that I say this. When going into a park and looking at the overview of, of the HUD, I would love to see that the score is 16 and 20. The team is on a two uh, game winning streak and there are zero to three players waiting. I would love to see zero to three players waiting so I can know not even to run over to that court. I would love to see if a court is a no squad court where they, all you got to do is put the no squad logo, right? As soon as the overhead look, just put it right on top of the uh, corner of that court. Like, nope, this is a no squads court. And then it says zero people waiting, three people waiting, five people waiting, four people waiting, whatever. I would love to know data like that before I run from one end of the, the park all the way to the other end just to know like dang i didn't even know those people on stocks darn it since we're still talking about the parks for a moment let's talk about lag spikes and stuff like that and screen tearing for the rise and elite courts now i've been seeing a bunch of videos on twitter of people posting pixelated screen tearing all throughout the entire city whether it's in my career whether it's in the city whether it's in the parks i've seen a bunch of it but one thing that a lot of people aren't talking about is the lag spikes. For instance, when you go into the park and you play for elite, for instance, if you go to the middle two courts, that's where the lag spikes and the, the jitters are the heaviest. I go in there. I, I time my jump shots every time. I know what, you know, I know how to shoot stuff like that. If I play on the, the right middle court, like if you go to the middle and you look to the right on the overhead, uh, hub right next to the, uh, train station that is the best court to play on but the ones in the middle they have a lot going on not only can you see almost all of the park all of the players people on the waiting guy next that's where a lot of people huddle up for whatever the case may be and that may be what's increasing the lag spikes but that has to be addressed immediately so let's talk about one of my favorite modes man let's talk about the rec center the rec center has its flaws definitely but i can say that i am enjoying the rec just playing it as a lockdown because I get to be everywhere. I get to do everything. Um, the new uh, dismissal of R1L1 is definitely challenging because there are players that are yelling out multiple icons at any given time, and it's up to the big to discern who to throw it to. Honestly, we just tell our big, whoever says their icon first, throw it to them. Now, let's talk about the lag outs at the end of games. There is something going around, and I've experienced it too, where you lag out after the ending buzzer. You con you instantly lag out of the game, and you get sent back to the main menu. You do get your win, but you don't get rep. That is a huge issue going on right now because a lot of people are rep grinders for their rep, and 
they are upset that they had to waste a half an hour of their time just to get lagged out whether it's a crazy statistic game or if it's a bad uh, statistics game it doesn't matter you still get lagged out and you get no rep for it that's a really really huge thing especially with the new top 10 thing being fluctuating and people not keeping their spots there will be clear-cut advantages to people that don't lag out of course but that's just a huge problem since we're still talking about the wreck let's talk about rebounding for a moment now of course rebounding applies to all things nba 2k24 but man can i say rebounds are like going far they're hitting the three-point line sometimes from three-point shots from mid ranges, they're just all going long. For whatever the case may be, bigs are having a huge issue because most guards leak out. Now, of course, I believe that 2K put this in a game to stop the leaking out and reward the offensive team that took a bad shot with getting long rebounds because people are breaking. Now, what I can say is as a gamer, I know for sure that I kind of like stay around, you know what I mean, around that three point area and just shade and try to track the ball the best I can. But sometimes, even with the ball going long, sometimes I can't even run to the ball before somebody else can. And I'll be in that, that general vicinity area of where the ball falls. So I believe rebounding definitely needs to be tweaked a little bit. I do like the rebounds that do go long, but sometimes keep it traditional. Keep a ball, you know, hitting the rim and going high straight up and coming down within that paint area. And sometimes to mix it up and still have the balls hit the three-point line to encourage the, you know, hey, stop running out for R1 squares or R1 circles or R1 Xs, you know what I mean? And and stay around the area and let's play some half-court offense for a moment. You know what I mean? So I completely understand it, but I just wanted to let everybody know that. So for my final thoughts, everyone, um, with playing the game since September 7th, uh, 2023, I can say that I believe that the game has potential. Um, there are a lot of things that need to be polished and, and touched and stuff like that and fixed. But all in all, it's definitely a different feel from 2K23, simply because all of these new animations, new motion styles, every player doesn't look the same. Mostly everybody is trying out new builds and, and stuff like that. And I'm having fun with my lockdown, trying to defend all of these new builds, whether it's a small shooting guard or a, a small slashing guard or a, a taller shooting guard or a talling slashing guard or a shorter passing guard or a bigger fading guard. I'm I'm enjoying all of it because this is the first 2K where I feel like everybody wasn't looking for a meta build for in the first few days of the game. Now I feel like everybody is trying everything out to see what truly works and see what type of thresholds they actually need for certain stuff. But I feel like definitely specialist builds will win in NBA 2K24 over a do-it-all build because let's be honest, being mediocre or average at everything will never beat being elite at two to three things. You feel what I'm saying? Now, as far as my impressions go, I do like the game. I am enjoying the game, but there are certain moments where I feel like, yo, I shouldn't have been lagged out of a game. Yo, my clothes should equip. I'm actually feeling the minimal things of the 2K24 problems because maybe I am not on a small guard build to start out the year, or maybe I am not on a big inside or stretch or post score dealing with rebounding too much. I'm kind of in the middle. Defense feels good to me. It, I definitely get bumpy. I definitely know how to guard on ball a lot better. And I am rewarded when people do things that they shouldn't be trying to get out of body to do. So from a lockdowns perspective, the game is A1, but I do understand that from a shooter's experience, there's a huge problem there. And I do understand from a big's rebounding experience, there's a huge problem there. So I do not want to count anybody out, but I will say that slashing, it's really, really good. Slashers, if they don't get bumped at all, like if you don't have a movable enforcer and stuff like that, just get out the way. But what I will say is final. Bumping players, as in if this is a football game, it's not a good look. I believe that bumping players should get toned down a little bit. Now, I do understand Bulldozer, whether it's on Gold, Silver, Hall of Fame, whatever, it's supposed to give you certain animations, even physical handles. But I am seeing things where players aren't getting called for offensive fouls 
when they throw their arm out at players. So if 2K implemented somewhere where offensive fouls may be a thing, or maybe we just haven't found that out because people aren't trying to take charges and stuff like that, or trying to beat their players to the spot first and not hold anything. Maybe we don't know, but from what I do know is when a player is trying to shade another player and stop them from driving, if they have no strength at all and no badges to help them, they are getting moved out the way. It, it kind of looks very, very arcadey for sure, but it not only happens in a park, it happens in a wreck as well. And that's where that's supposed to be more simulation style and stuff like that, as well as the shooting take. Oh my God. Not, a, not only does everyone love it, everyone needs it. No matter what your shooting rating is, go ahead and throw on that shot take. Shoot some full core shots for me. Throw up some 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 full core heaves for me, and and just watch yourself make them. It's it's an enjoyable moment for sure because it is the beginning of the game. But I know that things like that are definitely going to have to get toned down, especially for a realism standpoint. When the pro am and you know the rec and even when the two K league starts to get their build made of NBA two K, we are on the retail version, and I know that the two K league gets their own version. But I know for sure. By the time all of the patches come out and stuff like that, all the four core heaves, all of the shooting from half court with only a 66-3 and stuff like that, that stuff is going to stop for sure. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What's your thoughts on everything that I talked about today? Um, I know that this is more of an informative uh, over impressions, but I gave you my impression of everything that I you know, said in this video. Usually... I react to things when I hear them. Usually I try to see if I can make it happen to me simply so I can go through that experience to tell you guys how I feel about it. Now, of course, I'm not a big, I can't tell you what rebounding is like. I'm a, I can only tell you from like a small forward perspective of how the balls fall along. Um, I can't tell you what it's like to be a shooter because I don't shoot many fades unless I got my shooting take. So I can't tell you how the shooting experience is too much because I only have a 79.3. I don't have the best bases and best uppers in the world. I got what I need. JT Thor. Now, with that being said, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching this video. Again, like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will see y'all in the next next one. This is your boy IKC signing out. Peace. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, I'll King Kong, King Kong.